which will let you basically communicate between different applications. And today I'm going to show you Polybar's implementation of it. So this will let you do things like launch an application when you click on a module, or update the value of a module when you click on it, or even do things like only update a module when you tell it to update from another script. So this is very similar to with i3 blocks where you update the modules through signals. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So there's a couple of different uses for IPC and there's a couple of different ways you can interact with it. So I'm going to start with the use for it with modules and then afterwards I'm going to go and show you the way you can use it to control your polybar. And there's also a way to interact with IPC using polybar message and also echoing directly to the polybar message queue. I'm going to show you polybar message first and I'll show you the echoes afterwards. I don't use it so I'll have to go through the actual GitHub page for you. But I will basically step you through it and show you how it all works. So let's actually start with modules first up then. So I'll bring up my polybar configs. Obviously, as always, everything's in your polybar configs with defining polybar. And the first thing you're going to want to do is, where is it? So right here, this isn't going to be enabled by default. The first thing you need to do if you want to use any IPC with polybar is you need to enable IPC. I don't know why it's disabled by default. Someone can probably tell me why, but the first thing you need to do is put this in. So enable dash IPC equals true. Then once you reload your polybar, then you'll be able to start using IPC. Okay, so we'll go to my just a random module that I'm using IPC on. So that would be my torrents, for example. Okay, so this has a couple of things and it. it doesn't have everything that you can do with the IPC, but it has most of the general stuff. So the first thing is that when you define a module with IPC, I don't believe you can use intervals anymore, which is really, really annoying. So what you could do with intervals, if you've seen the previous video I did on Polybar, is you can tell a script to update every couple of seconds. But I don't believe you can actually do that with IPC. So you're going to have to come up with some other way, unless you want stuff to find every minute. If it's every minute or every couple of minutes, you can use a cron job or a system D timer for that but otherwise you're going to have to use sleeps. And generally it's not a problem. Generally it doesn't really matter if your modules don't update that quickly. If you need them to update quickly, you're probably better off using intervals. Typically for IPC, you're going to do stuff that only updates rarely. So for example, my backlight here, this only changes when I actually change the value of my backlight. So it doesn't actually have any meaning for it to update on an interval. That's just a waste of system resources, basically. We'll go over my torrents module first. So the first thing you need to do is define the type as custom slash IPC. And from here, there's a couple of things you need to do. So what you need to do is start defining hooks. So these are numbered from zero and then one, two, up from there. So my zero hook is i3 torrent. So I could define a couple of other hooks. I don't think I've got any ones that have multiple hooks, but I guess we can just define one here just for the sake of the video. So if I was to number this as hook one, and then let's say I want to just echo out hello world. So I'll show you that in a brief second after I actually show you how you define which hook is actually running by default. Next thing we have is click left. So if I click on this module, what will happen is it'll actually launch this program. So I'm running my terminal and then I'm passing transmission remote CLI into it. So that'll bring up my transmission client. And then all the rest of the stuff, the formatting is all identical. I'm not gonna go over formatting again. If you wanna see formatting, go to my previous video on Polybar, but just so you know, the formatting is completely identical. Nothing changes between custom scripts and custom IPC, so you don't need to learn anything new there. Now this is where it gets confusing, and that is with this initial here. So initial defines which of the hooks is the one that's displayed by default. Now you would think that if your hooks are indexed from zero, the initial would be indexed from zero. You would be wrong. So for some reason, the developers decided to index the hooks from zero, and then index the initial value from one. So if I have initial one here, what that means is that when my polybar first loads up, it's going to run hook zero. When I have it set as two, it's going to run hook one. 
So just remember that the initial index is one greater than your hook index. So if I just reload that now, so if I reload my polybell, as you can see up here, now it's switched from saying the hook uh, zero value to the hook one value. So if I change that back to initial one, then we can actually, oh, what did I just do? Oh, I moved that to the wrong screen. <laughs> I'll fix that. Okay, for some reason I, uh, I pressed super shift zero instead of super shift O, so that moved my window to my 10th desktop. <laughs> that was dumb. Anyway, we'll just reload that now and that'll now bring up my transmission stuff again. So this is just how you say which hook you want to initially run, but that's not too useful. So what do we do from here? So I've got the GitHub pages for this up on another page. So I'll just go over the other clicks. So in the previous video, I also did mention about the types of clicks, but you can actually use these with polybar message to tell the script to update when you click on it. So I'll go over that in just a brief moment, but the clicks are click left, click middle, click right, scroll up, scroll down, double click left and double click right. I don't like my modules updating when I click on them. So I'm not using that. Okay, so from here, this actually shows you an example of how a polybar message works. So if we want to use it within the actual module, if you want it to update when you click on it, you can use this special value here that will actually say the ID of the polybar process. So this is percent PID percent. So I don't typically use this because all of my modules that I use I want them to update across all of my polybars if I'm using multiple. But if you do want to actually say you only want to update this one polybar, you can use a dash P and then give it the PID of the polybar that you want to update. So from here, I'll actually show you how this works. So we'll go into polybar message now because that I think would be the best place to go from here. Cause I don't think there's anything really to go over for the rest of the actual module stuff. I think that's generally it. So I'll go over to one of my scripts where I'm actually updating one of these. So let's just use the light script, for example. Actually, no, we'll use one that I actually have to find in a script like this. So my volume script, for example, that's a good one. Okay. So this command at the bottom here, so I've still got my i3 blocks command in here. So if you've ever used i3 blocks, the way you update your modules with that was through signals. And I don't know, that's probably more portable, but some reason the developers decided to define their own IPC method. Maybe there's some reason for it, but this is how it works. So the general way you're going to be using polybar message is through this function right here. So polybar dash message hook. So that's the thing you want to run. And then the name of the module and then the value of the actual hook. So this also is indexed from one, not from zero. So if you've got a module on hook zero, then you're gonna put in one. So I'll actually show you just so you don't get too confused by what I'm saying there. So we'll bring that up and we'll go down to my volume module. So the hook I've got in here is hook zero, right? So the hook that I want to update is uh, valued at one. Don't ask why the developers decided to do that. I still have no idea. So now when I update my volume, as you can see up the top, it's actually changing that value. So this is useful for things that you don't need to update very often. So say you want to only update your volume in your polybar module when the volume changes, or you want to only say, I've got on this side here, the number of updates that I've got available. So I only want that to actually change when I have to get new updates. So only when new updates are downloaded, do I want that updated or with my torrents, only when new torrents are added, paused or seeding, do I want that updated? I don't want that continuously updating because yeah, I could do that, that's perfectly fine. But for most things, it's just gonna be a waste of system resources. And for things like my backlight or my volume, it'll make it seem like it's really slow if I use intervals rather than IPC, because what will happen is that you'll change the value, then it won't update until the next update cycle. But with IPC, it'll update as soon as the queue runs out of that hook that you decide to put into it. So if I did want to actually say only update a certain polybar, then what I would do is I would do dash P and then give it the whatever the, that's just a random number, but whatever the PID 
of that poly bar is. But for most hooks, you're not really gonna ever do that because most of the time what you want to do is have your poly bars synced. But there are probably occasions where you wanna have certain things updated on one poly bar and not on the other. I don't really have a use for that, but I will show you a method that you can use because through poly bar message, it's a bit more difficult, but the, you can do it. So let's actually go over how the rest of the IPC stuff works. So that's all you need if you only want to do modules with IPC, but there are other stuff you can do with IPC. So I thought it would be a good idea to actually cover those as well. Okay, so this is the other GitHub page for Polybar IPC. Once again, make sure you have enable IPC set to true. The first thing it's gonna show you how to do is through the echo method, not the Polybar message method. Okay, so besides hooks, actually hooks are in here. So if you wanna use a hook, the way that this works, so we can go echo hook colon module slash the name of the module, sorry, I spelled that wrong, the name of the module and then the hook ID, so one. And then I would echo that to slash TMP slash poly, poly bar underscore MQ, and I'm gonna spell this wrong, and then dot star. That would reference all of the actual poly bars. So if I put that in now, that'll then actually send that to the queue. You won't see anything change because I didn't actually change a value, but basically that would then echo that to the polybar queue and that will just tell it to update. So that's exactly what polybar message is doing in the background, but it's just a much simpler interface to use that. If you don't want to use polybar message or for whatever reason, polybar message isn't packaged with your version of polybar, it should be on pretty much every distro, then this is also another method. So this can also be used for actions. So I did mention in my previous polybar video about action handlers, I've never used them, but you can probably do some pretty cool stuff with them. So you can actually use this through the IPC protocol as well. So action, I'll just show you that in my terminal here, just so you get a bit of a better idea. So let's say menu, menu underscore close. And that would be how you use the action syntax with the echo method. So you can also do that through this method here. So polybar dash message, then action, the name of the action, so menu underscore close. So that would be how you do it through the polybar message method. Okay, so you might be getting a rough idea of how this works. So then for commands, instead of putting in action here, you would put in command, right? And the name of the command. So then for the uh, the echo method, instead of the polybar message method, that would be CMD and the name of the command. So let's say you want to run, I don't know, hide. Actually, I'll show you this one because this one should work. So if we do echo CMD hide, that should hide my polybar. See? And now if we do echo CMD show, that will then show the polybar. So much like doing that through the polybar message method. So CMD hide, CMD show. So all the polybar message program is doing is basically wrapping around the echo method. It's a much, much simpler process to use polybar message. I would recommend using it if you have access to it. Okay, so for the commands, there's a couple of commands in here. So you have quit, so if you wanna kill the bar, we have restart, hide, show, and toggle. Hide and show do exactly what you would expect them to do. Toggle will switch between hiding and showing. So I'm using this for when I'm full screening. So if you notice my poly bar is hidden, if I just enable my compositor again, normally when I full screen, you'd be able to see the poly bar behind the actual window, but I'm also hiding it when I go full screen, so you can't see it. Really, you don't have to do that. I like it there, so I don't know. It's kind of cool. Okay, I'll re-kill that compositor just so it's a bit easier to see. So in here, it also gives some idea of how to work with the echo method with multiple polybars. So if you only have one bar running, you could use the following command to send messages. So you get the PID of the polybar at the end. But if you only have one bar running, you might as well use the dot star method because it's basically the same. And also the dot star method like I've been using will also update every single polybar you have available. However, 
there is another thing you can do. So if you have multiple bars running, you're going to need to come up with some way to save the PIDs of each bar. And here's the method that's shown in here. I'm not exactly sure what this syntax is. Dollar exclamation mark. I haven't seen that before, so I, I'm not really sure. Maybe that's like a bash thing or something? I don't know. But what this will let you do, or the other method is just to get the PID of the polybar as soon as you open it, and then save that to a temp file, and then just cat that out whenever you need it. What that will let you do is keep a reference to the PID of one of those polybars. So you can make it so you can update one of them at a time. Once again, I don't really know the point of only updating one bar, but if you really want to do that, then that is available for you. If you've got some random use case where you only want one bar updated, maybe you've got maybe you've got two bars running, maybe you want a different bar on your external screen. That's actually, there's an, a reason for it. You've got a different bar on your external screen than you do on your main screen. That is one use for it. So if you're in a situation like that, where you've got so many modules you need to do that, then you can do that through this method here or through some other method of saving the PID. The other thing you can do is if you want to update a bar by clicking on it, you can use this command right here. I'm not entirely sure what this does. Presumably it gets the PID of the clicked bar in some way and then cuts out something, but I've never used this process before. So you're going to have to test it for yourself. I've pretty much already gone over the polybar message method throughout this video. So there's nothing too extra to say here. So yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. Polybar message is really, really useful. And I actually really like it. I, I didn't think there was something like this available when I started using Polybar, but now that I've found it, it lets me do a lot of really cool stuff that I've wanted to do for a while. So before I go, I'm going to talk about the stuff that I'm actually using IPC for. So I've briefly mentioned it throughout the video, but the modules up here that I'm using it for are this Pac-Man updates here. So this will only update every time I query for new packages. So I've got that updating on a cron job every, I think 30 minutes or so, or every hour. So that'll query the Pac-Man database or the Arch database for new package updates. Then this one here, my torrents, this will update when I delete a torrent, when I add torrents, when I have torrents switching over to seeding. And I think that's it. So that'll just give me a visual look at the actual state of my transmission client. Then I'm also using it for backlight. So you've seen that throughout the video. So if I turn that down, I turn that up. Basically that's so I don't have that running on interval and wasting resources for no reason whatsoever. I've also got my volume up here on IPC. So for the exact same reason that backlight is, so I don't have that just wasting system resources, updating a value that isn't changing. Cause most of the time I'll set a volume value and then I'll just leave it for a while and then I'll come back and update it later. But doing that through intervals just doesn't happen. It, you, you would have to have it updating like every second and that's just wasting resources. I was also thinking of doing my timer through that, but there might be a better method through the use of actions so I can make it so it shows only this part and then if I click on it or press something else, it'll also show the date. I don't know what the best method of doing that is. If someone's got an idea for that, let me know and I will absolutely implement it and I'll probably talk about it in a separate video. So I think that's pretty much everything for me now. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this where I just do random tutorials, let me know down below. I'll be happy to do them. I absolutely find them fun and it, I guess, helps me understand these processes a lot better as well. So I'm getting something out of it. You're getting something out of it. Everyone wins. So up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video is in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my library. So if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube, go check that out. I've also got my Discord. So if you want to chat with me, go check that out as well. And I'm in there most days. So just at me or leave a message in general and I'll get to it at some point. Down below, I've also got my support link. So if you want to support the channel, go check that out. And also my Twitter and my Mastodon. So if you want to get video updates, that's probably the best place to get them. And also obviously my Discord. So I think that's pretty much everything for me now. And I'm out.